Hi everyone and welcome back. What we're going to do now is we're going to take everything that we learned in the last PowerPoint, all the different parties to crime crimes, and we're going to learn how to put them together to answer our homework that we're going to use. Um, and I'm going to teach you the format to put your homework in. And this is the same format you're going to use for every homework assignment and all exam questions from here to the end of the semester. Okay, so we're going to combine the specific things we learned with also learning the format that we're going to use. So let me share my PowerPoint. Okay. So, like I said, we're putting everything together that we learned and we're learning that systematic way of how to answer questions. So just a couple of things quick that you want I want to review. First, elements of crime. Remember, we spent multiple weeks talking about all of the elements of crime. Well, we're coming back to that because you're going to use these elements now for specific crimes that we're going to talk about from now to the end of the semester. So remember, for every crime, you need to have all of the elements. It's like a wheel for criminal liability. So mens rea, actus reus, concurrence, harm, causation, and attendant circumstances if a prosecutor cannot prove every one of those elements, then the wheel of justice stops and you cannot prosecute them for that crime. So please remember those elements. Now remember how we did the mens rea and actus reus assignment. For mens rea, we just listed the mens rea and there was only four choices, intentional, knowing, reckless, negligent. That's what you're gonna do for your homework. And then actus reus, you're going to read the statutes and you're going to pick out the actus reus specifically for those crimes. And you'll see as an example as I go through. OK. Also remember defenses. So then we spent two weeks specifically talking about defenses. And we said negative defense is always when it's a failure to prove when the prosecutor cannot prove one of the elements of the crime. That's failure to prove. Remember, alibi is a form of a negative defense because you can't prove actus reus if the person wasn't there. And then we had two categories of affirmative defenses. We had justification defenses and we had excuse defenses. Now, remember, justification, excuse are just categories. They're not actual defenses. So if you write on your answer, justification defense or excuse defense, it will be wrong because that's a category. It's like saying you ate food, right? So remember, you have to use specific names of defenses. So the justification were necessity, consent, self-defense. Um, I think we use battered child syndrome, battered woman syndrome. Those are specific names of defenses, and that's what you need to write. Then you have excuse defenses. So there's certain defenses that are just excuses. So age, insanity, intoxication, duress, entrapment, mistake. Those are some of the um, excuse defenses. And then finally, we talked about procedural defenses. And we talked about double jeopardy and speedy trial and prosecutorial misconduct and some of those defenses. So those would also be some forms of defenses. Now, as a last review, remember, we just finished talking about parties to crime. And we said when we're reviewing parties of crime, we have to ask who is the principal in the first, who's the person that committed the crime. And then we have to ask ourselves, are there other people that were involved, but were not the principals in the first or second? Okay, or principals in the first, really. And then we said, if there are other people, then we have to decide, did they help before or during the crime? If they help before or during the crime, then we're going to charge them with either accomplice liability or criminal facilitation in New York. If they helped after the crime, then we're going to charge them with either hindering prosecution or obstruction of governmental administration. So those are the crimes that you choose from for New York. So that's a quick reminder. So we are now, I'm going to take that knowledge and we're going to put it together in the specific format. This is the format you're going to write all your answers for, for your homework from now to the end of the semester. And also what you're going to use on your exams. So we're going to go through it step by step so you understand each step of the process. So the first step is read the scenario and decide what you would charge the person with based on the facts of the scenario. So your very first step is always to read the assignment, okay? So on your assignments, I'm going to give you a scenario. You are the prosecutor. You're the one that gets to decide what to charge. So you read your scenario and then you decide as a prosecutor in New York, what charge would you seek against the person? 
Okay. So you're always going to pick some crime, even if ultimately you don't think it's going to work, you have to pick some crime out of the New York penal law. Now, here's our scenario. So let's try it together. Two boys are on the road with their dad. He recently was released from jail for armed robbery. During a brief stop, dad uses a gun and steals money from a family, which is robbery in the first degree. The sons were in the gas station at the time and didn't participate in the actual stealing of the money, but know that he robbed the family and get into the car, excuse me, car with him and drive away. So the question is, what parties of crime crimes could you charge the sons? So we're going to charge the sun. So we learned all about parties to crime. Now we're going to learn how to write this up as an answer to our homework. So remember, we're going to go through the parties of crime analysis. So our first step is, who is the principal in the first? Who is the one that committed the underlying act of Shreyas? And in our case, it was the father, correct? So then we want to know about the son. So are there any other parties? Yes, the sons were there. Did they help before or during the crime? The answer is no, they did not help during or before the crime. But then we have to ask, did they help after the crime? And then maybe they possibly did. So that is where we would be. We would fall under accessory. So now we need to think about what are the New York accessory crimes that we could charge. So we're going to use our little chart that we did, and we're going to figure out which specific section of the New York Penal Code that we're going to charge. And this is section, this is step two. So, so step one, read the scenario and kind of think about the common law definitions that we learned and which one it would fit under. And then step two, now we're picking the specific New York crime out of the New York penal law. OK, so I gave you the little reference sheet that tells you what your choices are. So we said if they helped before or during, we're going to be either under accomplice or criminal facilitation. We said if they helped after, we're going to be under hindering prosecution or obstruction of governmental administration. Well, we had already decided that we were going to that they helped after the fact, if anything. So that means we're now limited to these two choices. But as you can see, there's multiple sections. So we have to look at the penal law and look through each of the degrees and figure out which degree we think best fits that, okay? So look through the requirements of hindering prosecution, look through the requirements of obstruction of governmental administration and see if you can find a section that would fit best. And when you found it, you can restart the video. So stop the video, look for it, and then restart the video. So I picked section 20560, hindering prosecution in the second degree. I think that's the section that fits best. So I'm the prosecutor. That would be the crime that I'm going to charge the sons with. OK, so now that I picked my crime, now I move on to section or to step three. This is just like your mens rea homework that you already did. You're going to read the statute and you're going to identify what's the mens rea that's listed in the statute. I also gave some reference to it on your parties to crime reference sheets. You can look at that and that should help you narrow down the mens rea. Remember, you only have four choices for mens rea, intentional, knowing, reckless, negligent. So when I say Mandrea, it should be just one of those words. That should be what's listed in your homework. Okay, so Mandrea would be intentional, intend to prevent arrest, and intentional, or I'm sorry, and knowing that they committed the crime. So for this section, there's actually two Mandrea, intent to prevent arrest and knowing that the person committed a crime. So you would just list intentional and knowing as your mens rea. Now we need to read the statute and we need to pick out what are the actus reus for this. So remember, we read the statute and other than the mens rea, we list all of the actus reus requirement to, required to commit this crime. So see if you can read through it and identify or list the actus reus. So I list the actus reus as render criminal assistance to a person and that person committed a B or C felony. So those are the three things that the prosecutor has to prove in order to convict this person intent. They knew they committed a crime. And then these three actus reus. And you just bullet them straight down, just like we did on the actus reus homework. Now we move on to step five. 
So since we are prosecutors, we have the burden of proof. We have to carry the bag of evidence into court to prove each of those things. So we've now listed what the requirements are for the crime, the mens rea and the actus reus. Now we have to think about it like as an investigator, what evidence can I show to the jury to actually prove these elements? And you're going to be tempted to just say, start to describe what the person did. But that's not evidence. A prosecutor cannot just stand up and tell a story. They have to actually present the jury with actual evidence to prove what they are saying. So you need to think of what types of evidence you could have. You could have witness testimony. You could have victim testimony. You could have documentation of something. You could have video camera. You could have... um, fingerprints, DNA. So you have to think of what actual evidence are you going to use to prove each individual element. So when you're getting to this section, you need to list each element and tell me what proof you would use. So for example, my mandrea is intentional. How do I prove intentional? Well, maybe I get the sons to confess. Maybe I just show it through the son's actions and what they did. I have to show render criminal assistance. Hmm, how can I show that? Well, maybe I have video of them driving away. Maybe I have witness testimony saying that the boys helped the father in some way. Um, A person, we have to show that the the principal in the first was a person. So obviously maybe the mother would testify that it was their father. That's obviously a person. And we have to prove that the principal in the first committed the B or C felony, okay? Okay. So how would we show that? We would have to have proof of that crime. So videotape from the gas station, victim's testimony, the criminal charges against the father. We just have to show that it was a B or C felony. So next section six. So now for section six, we have to explain why we chose the crime that we chose. Now, many of you are going to want to say, well, it just fit the elements. That is not a proper answer. The purpose of this section is for you to convince me persuasively that you understand the differences between the laws. So I need you to explain why you picked hindering and uh, prosecution over accomplice. Why didn't you say it was accomplice liability? Then I need to tell you why did you choose the second degree over the first degree? So you need to explain these things. You need to convince me that you legitimately understood what the differences on the crimes actually are. And you do that through writing and explaining why you chose that crime over other possible crimes and that degree over other possible degrees and make sure that you really explain it. So when I read this, I'm like, oh yeah, they totally get it. So for my example, You might want to write something like this. In this case, the prosecutor would attempt to claim hindering prosecution in the second degree since they helped their father avoid the crime of robbery. So prosecutors so avoid the crime. So they didn't actually commit the robbery themselves. They helped the father avoid. So prosecutors can prove mens rea because the sons intended to help by jumping in the car and leaving the father. And they knew that he committed the robbery. For actus reus, they did render him A to the underlining crime. And we know the underlining crime was a B felony. So that is why we chose second degree. If this is not successful, we could also reduce the charges and charge something else like, and you could give examples of other things that you could charge. So you can also do that. Tell them what a lesser offense would be that you could charge. Now, we're almost done. Step seven. Now we're flashing back to defenses. So now we have to talk about what are possible defenses. So you need to look through your notes at all the defenses that we talked about, and you need to pick one that you think fits best. Remember, I did a reference sheet that's really helpful. If you have that with you, you can quickly look through it and you can figure out if any of those defenses apply. And what you need to do in this section is you need to name the defense. So you need to use proper terminology, duress, consent, self-defense. Use the terms that we talked about in class. So you name it what it is. Then you need to tell me what the legal test is for that defense. So negative defense is a failure to prove one of the elements. Okay. And so you have to tell me what the test is, the legal test for that defense. And then finally, you have to explain to me whether or not you think it would be successful. 
Now, you're going to be tempted sometimes just to write no defense. There's no defense. But that's not right. There's always a defense. And we as prosecutors have to anticipate those defenses. So we really need to think about what a possible defense could be and write that down. So don't write no defense or you will not get any points for that uh, answer. Now, so for my example, maybe you could argue negative defense. So you would define it, failure to prove one of the elements. And then you would have to explain whether or not you think it's successful. So a prosecutor may not be able to prove the actus reus element of aid was rendered. What did the sons do to actually aid other than jump into the car? Was that enough for rendering aid? Um, I don't think it would be successful because they did drive away and that could be aiding but that maybe would be what you go after, that they didn't do anything. They just got in the car and they did not aid, okay? So that could be one of your defenses. Now, last step, identify the class and the sentence range. So you'll need to look at the crime that you chose, look at the bottom, locate the class of crime, and then look under sentencing 7000 if it's a felony, 7015 if it's a misdemeanor or violation, and give me the proper sentence range. Remember, sentence ranges have three numbers, a minimum and a maximum range, okay? So remember, maximum often includes two numbers because you have a range that the uh, judge can choose in between. Now, there's one catch you have to be really careful about. When you're looking at accomplice, when you look up section 2000 for accomplice and you're looking for the class, you may be like, wait, there's no class. How am I gonna know what the sentence is? Well, remember what we said about accomplice liability. You're treated with the same punishment as the principal in the first. So if you choose accomplice liability, you have to know what the principal in the first crime was, find out its class and its sentence range and use that for the sentence range for accomplice liability because they're treated the same as the principal in the first. Okay. So in our case, it wasn't. So we can find the class just by looking. It was an E felony. And then when we look at section 7000, we know E felony is one year to three to four years maximum range. Okay. So that is our sentence. So when you write it up, you want your answer to look similar to this. You don't write it in paragraph form. You don't write a paper or anything. You just list it down like this. So you start with the name of the crime and the section number, and then you just list the mens rea, intentional and knowing. And then we list our actus reus, rendering criminal assistance to a person committed a B or C felony. And then we identify the evidence or the proof that we would use to prove each of these elements. So we go through them one by one, explaining what we would show the jury. We have our why, why we chose this, and we're persuading the teacher that we understand the differences between the crimes. We have our negative defense, which we define, and then we decide if it's successful. And then we have our class and our sentence range. Okay, so hopefully you understood that. And we will use the same format from now to the end of the semester. So all homework, every single homework from now to the end of the semester, and then every essay on an exam. Now I will say, be very careful when you're answering questions, read very carefully what's being asked in the scenario. I will never ask you to identify crimes that we have not talked about yet in class. So if you read the homework very carefully, it will say, what are the parties to crime crimes that you can charge? What are the inchoate crimes you can charge? What are the homicide crimes you can charge? Only list the crimes that I'm asking for. You don't have to list every single crime that could be possibly charged in the penal law. I just want you to focus on the ones that we talked about in class. So if you read a scenario and you think it's a crime that we haven't gone over, don't use it because it's not. You can only use the crimes that we went over in class. Okay, so don't get sucked down a rabbit hole for all those different crimes. So let's put one in action and see if you really understand how to do it. So here's your scenario. Winkler rests 
uh, rents a private room at a boarding house and leaves explicit instructions that no one is to know he is there. Respecting the tenant's wishes, the landlord Stubble tells anyone he, he was never seen Winkler, even though he thinks that it is very suspicious. After five days, Winkler leaves without paying his bill. The police inform Stubble that Winkler is a murderer and murder is an A1 felony. So we need to ask ourselves, is there any crime that you could possibly charge Stubble within the New York penal law? Okay. So remember, first, we're going to think about who was the principal. And then if there's other people, then did they help before, during, or after the crime? And we need to think about that. Okay. And then when we think about that, oh, so here's what I said. You need to think of who was the principal in the first. If it's not all the parties, then the other people, did they help before or during? You're going to fall under accomplice. If they helped after, they're going to be accessory. So you're going to have to narrow down which one you think it is. If you decide ex accomplice, you're going to pick between these two. If you decided accessor after the fact, you're going to decide between these two. So you need to look in the penal law and narrow it down which one that it is. Okay. And then these are the things you need to answer. The crime, the section, the mens rea, the actus rea is proof or evidence, why defenses, and then the class and sentence range. Okay. So now that you have all that. This is the scenario. So write down what you think, and then you stop the video, write it down, and then when you think you have it, start the video again, and I'll show you my sample answer. Okay, here's my sample answer. I chose hindering prosecution first degree. I listed my mens rea, intentional and knowing, so there's two mens reas. And then you have to render criminal assistance to a person who committed an A felony. So those are my three actus reus. Now I need to list, list each of those and explain what type of evidence I would use to prove each of those in court. So maybe intentionally I got a confession or I have a statement from Stubble that he knew it was suspicious that could show intentional. Rendering aid, you could show, show the hotel receipt or witnesses could testify that he denied that Stubble was, or Winkler was there to a person. So you testify, you have a witness testify that Winkler was actually there and Stubble knew. A direct actor, the principal in the first, committed an A felony. Well, we said murder was an A felony. So you could show the arrest warrant or anything like that. Now, why did we choose this crime? Well, it didn't really fit accomplice liability because it didn't meet all of those elements that they wanted the person to commit the crime, right? So they helped after the fact. So we need to be in a comp, an accessory liability. And we had two choices, hindering prosecution or obstruction of governmental administration. And it seemed to fit better in, in hindering prosecution, okay? And then we chose this degree because, and then explain the degree. Now, negative defense is a possible defense. Failure to prove one of the elements. And in this case, it might be mens rea. Failure to prove that he didn't know that he had committed a crime, okay? Or that you have to know that they committed a crime. So that could be a defense. He didn't know. And since he didn't know, you can't give him this defense. And then um, class and then the sentence range, one to three to seven years. So you can see this format. Okay, now I posted three problems online. So if you want to print them and try to answer them, you can. Um, and then you compare them to the key that I gave. So I'm gonna quickly quick click through them. So here's um, the first one. So you may want to read it, stop it, try to answer, and then look at the answer and look at the answer key. Okay, if you're not done, stop the video. And then when you're ready, I'll show you the answer. Okay, here's what I have. I chose accomplice liability in this case and you can read through my answer. Okay, here's number two. So you can read through it. Okay. Try to do your whole analysis. 
And when you're done, click or start it and see if you got what I got. Here's what I got. Okay, here's the last one, problem three. So read through it, stop the video, read through it, try to write down your answers. And then when you're ready, start the video again and I'll show you my answer. Okay. And this is what I had. So hopefully you got the same thing or something similar. If you're completely off base, I would suggest that you come and talk to me. You want to make sure you're using this. If you're using the crime of murder or any other crime or rape, then that's not right. I'm not, we haven't taught you that yet. You're only limited to the parties to crime crimes that I went over. Accomplice, criminal facilitation, hindering prosecution or obstruction of governmental administration. So if you're using other things, it's wrong. You have to stick to those particular crimes. Okay. So that is the end of parties to crime. Like I said, you can practice. There's some practice problems. Make sure you understand when you feel comfortable, then go ahead and try this chapter seven assignment. And I'll try to grade it and get it back to you if you need to redo it. So thank you for a good week and I will see you next week.